if we have to deal with those difficult issues, we remember that there is an environment in which we are operating and then invite the students also, what do they think, you know, as opposed to this is it. You, you can essentially tell people what you want to tell them by asking questions. You can, you can get them to think about it that way, as opposed to being very prescriptive because sometimes people are resistant to people telling them what to do. Well, you can tell them what to do by asking them to think about the issues and then those, your thoughts become their thoughts. It, then it's easier for the instructor as well. But if it's like, you must understand this, you must get it now, sorry, I don't want to get it. That's freedom, you know, and that's what I teach, freedom. It's easy to, to try to criticize another view that we disagree with. It's, it's much more difficult to question our own views. But I think that's, you know, that's what we usually mean by critical thinking. It's asking the stupid questions that people take for granted. It's asking, why would I think that when everyone else agrees, right? Maybe it's because everyone else agrees. And I think most people would agree, that's not a very good reason for, for thinking something, just because everyone else agrees, right? Well, the majority holds this, you know, um, because there's a consensus, whatever that may mean. Forcing students to ask themselves the questions and try to argue against their position, it is an exercise, and it is part of what it means to, to be educated, to ask ourselves tough questions. And I think in order to form these communities where we can really engage in challenging conversations around race and the environment, uh, challenging conversations around things like climate change, right? These giant challenges that are scary and overwhelming. In order to do all of that, we actually have to like and care about the people we're engaging with. Or if at least if we don't like them, we have to respect them, right? And so so I've been thinking about and trying to create classroom communities and other learning communities that cultivates that more explicitly. Right, trying to put yourself in somebody else's shoes, which folks don't like doing that. It takes work, it takes time, it takes patience to have these difficult dialogues. When we think about difficult conversations, we have to look at ourselves. We have to ask ourselves, why do I feel uncomfortable? Why don't I want to engage in this topic? Why do I put everything else in front of me that's supposedly not as important? And why does this always take the back burner? Why do I silence my colleagues and my students and other people that bring up this conversation? Alice Walker says it so beautifully. She says, we have to own the fears that we have of each other. And then in some practical way, some daily way, figure out how to see people differently than the way we were brought up to. I had a class once when a student, almost to the end of the quarter said, this was the first class she was taking that somebody actually asked what she thought. The student came to say that because of the experience in class. And one of the things I do is also to ensure that when they speak, that voice is not diminished. They do not feel that they are not valued. It's really important to be able to see what the extremes are so that you don't go there. Maybe there is this, you know, the, this, the, the happy medium, the tension. I say, you know, balance is not absence of tension. It is when everything, you're pulled in different directions. That's when you have balance. It's not when there's no tension. It's when the tension is, is just right that you can stay straight. We're constantly pulled in so many directions. And so yeah, if we want to stay on the, the straight, the narrow, whatever you, you call it, the balanced position, it's a constant negotiation between things that are pulling us in, in different directions. To admit discomfort, um, I do this all the time. It's I think it's just part of who I am, and maybe that's not comfortable space for for other folks. But when things feel a little complicated, I often just say, "This feels a little messy and uncomfortable right now." Is anyone else feeling that? So why are we feeling that way? And then again, that sort of emotional response can be an entry point for additional conversation. Essentially, having these building blocks 
introducing concepts at stages which I think might be useful for their understanding, then opening them up to the larger questions and then by the time they get to the larger questions, all those basic things then begin to make sense because now they can use that as the framework to understand all the other issues that you face. And so asking questions, you know, I mean, as, as teachers, whether you find asking questions natural or not, what I find most interesting is asking pe people questions and asking them why. You know, that perhaps is the, the most important um, question of all. Why this? Why that? Why do I think that? Why do I ask questions? First, I want to know what students think. But secondly, I want to know why they think that. And, um, and asking questions is a way to understand, I guess, arguments, which that is something I realized after teaching 15, 16 years, that I think what I was really trying to get students to think about is, is why, they, why they believe certain things or why they um, the hold to certain positions. So what that means is that I, as an individual, can't be a subject matter expert in most of what I teach. And I don't find that disconcerting, right? So I am not a subject matter expert in much of what I teach. But what I am an expert at is this process of interpretation and translation and question ask. And so that's one of the ways that I model this, this um, humility and curiosity is that I admit very openly that I don't have the sort of subject matter depth, right? That a faculty member, maybe in organic chemistry, I always pick on the organic chemists, but I so admire that kind of just laser focused depth, right? That's a different sort of set of knowledge and skills than someone who does interdisciplinary work offers. And so I'm open about that. Um, I ask lots of questions of the students and the students ask questions of me. And when they ask questions of me and I don't know the answers, I say, I don't know the answer. How can we figure this out? So we all must understand that it is our responsibility to not only just read about difficult conversations or listen to videos or watch videos. But what is important is that we must internalize what it is and then we must take action. You can read all that you want to read, but if you're not putting it into action and making action part of the change, nothing will be accomplished. And we will be having this conversation, not just 400 years later, but 500 years later and so forth. This is the time, the time is now to have these conversations.